So Sudi talked about um, a better way of delivering our pick meetings to a larger crowd. And you know, I'm an old gray haired guy. I've been doing this a while. And had ideas where we, if we just did it in the evening, you'd get bigger crowds. Not true. Many parents are running their kids in the evening. They don't have time to do it. Um, if you do it early in the morning, you get a little different group. If you do it in the middle of the day, you get a different group. I, I actually had never seen it done in the middle of the day, but of course, Midland being more of a business community that has the business in town, it does work fairly well here. So uh, the suggestion was to tape the meeting. So you'll see his mic today. And we'll be trying our very first time to tape it, and then we'll play it on our YouTube channel for other people to do to see as well. So um, this year, we, we provided several topics up front. Hopefully, you got those from Cindy. And um, today's topic is Project Lead the Way. And if you remember, that was part of our, our STEM strategic plan. Um, it's a big portion of it. It start, So year one was in Central Park. It is now K-12 throughout the district. Um, moving forward, lots to still learn on that, and, but we have some people who will go through that. Um, a couple other quick things for me today. In front of you, you should have um, our school resource officer pamphlet about the information on that. So that's a county initiative. Um, it's not necessarily an MPS initiative, but we were brought to the table, and I'll give you a little quick history on that. Um, so Midland Public has been fortunate for a number of years to have two school resource officers located predominantly at our high schools, and those are funded through the city of Midland. Um, the three out-county school districts um, said we'd really like something like that, and they approached the county commissioners because their officers would be provided by the sheriff's department. The county commissioners didn't see how they could fund that through their general fund, and they began to talk about a millage. Well, you don't pass a county-wide millage without MPS being involved, being that we're 68% of the county. And so um, very late in August, um, the city manager and I was asked to attend a meeting, um, and we started thinking, OK, how are we going to tell our citizens to pass a millage for th the three out counties and we're not receiving anything? And so it quickly moved from that to the two, if passed, the two present officers would now be funded by the millage. The city would not fund that through the general fund. Your millage would be, that you pay to the city would be reduced by that amount if you're in the city. Um, it would be reduced that amount. And then, um, because of our size, if you've ever seen research on school resource officers, there's a ratio that they suggest um, that we were asking for additional officers. We thought the millage could do two more for us. So under the millage, if approved, we would get four. They would be placed at our four secondary buildings, and then we would sign them an elementary to cover. The two middle schools are logically the two elementaries next door. The two high schools would be the closest elementaries to them. And then you say, let me do the math on that. There's a couple other elementaries not included. And the school board has um, looked at funding a fifth one that where we would cover those elementary schools. And so if you know, a couple things on school resource officers. Yes, they're a big part of hardening your target. But it's only a small part of actually what they do. Um, you know, they're trained on a lot of different things, including counseling techniques, how to meet with kids, um, and then get them to the proper resources. They also um, intervene very early because they get out there and they get those their informants and their narcs and the people that tell them stuff, and so they can intervene with students early in the process. They also are a resource for what happens outside the school. Um, in the evenings in our homes and our neighborhoods. Um, we, we will get the heads up ahead. He can follow a student who had a, had a traumatic event the night before and assist with that. And then it also worked, works in reverse that they can provide um, that information back to the officers in the evening and during the summer or what's occurring there. So they're, they're a big piece of um, the puzzle. I mean, there's a lot of pieces in the puzzle of school safety, but we would hope you would consider um, approving that millage and, to, and read about it. It will be, as you know, when, when you get to the ballot on over 7 or 6, it's probably going to be an overwhelming size of the ballot. And the schools always kind of come last because it comes you know, state level, county level, city level, and then we'll be at the end. So please make your way through to that. The other piece that's very important on there is we have a school board millage uh, election on there. And we have um, three seats up, um, two incumbents rerunning, Pam Singer as president, uh, Patrick uh, for Z, and then Angela Brandstand, who after eight, nine, ten years is deciding not to be on. We have five candidates running, and I would tell you to do your research on those five candidates. As a superintendent, been around a long time, a school board's vital um, in setting direction and policy for a district, and school board members need to see the big picture. They need to have collaboration skills, and I would tell you that not all of them running have that, and so that's as far as I get to go. Do your research, do your due diligence, and figure out those pieces of it. So um, a little bit about that. Um, 
the agenda for the year. We have things out there, but we still will have question and answers for any time you have issues. If there's something you still would like to be seen, please send that to Cindy, and we'll try to add that and fit that into what we do as well going forward. So at this time, I'm going to um, hand it off to Scott Cochran, and I'll let Scott even define his role in the district because he has a, a, a variety of jobs sure. under his title, and then get into Project Lead the Way. Thanks, Mike. Yep. Good afternoon. Welcome, and first, just let me start by saying thank you for being here. Uh, we all know that having active, involved parents in students' education is a, is a tremendous key. Uh, you're the number one most important factor, so thank you very much for caring enough to be here. Uh, we're very thankful for you. So my name is Scott Cochran. I'm the Auxiliary Education Curriculum Specialist for, for Midland Public Schools. So what does that mean? I work with our teachers and principals in art, music, PE and health, world languages, and career tech ed. Uh, and then, so I'm in all 11 school buildings, uh, working with principals and teachers across the board. And then we all have other duties as assigned in our jobs, right? So um, one of the things that's assigned that's been really exciting lately for me uh, is the, uh, the starting off some of the new electives that we have for this school year and moving forward. And uh, we're just, we're thrilled to be able to offer additional opportunities for, for your students. Uh, it's been some time since we were able to do this. In fact, I've been here for nine years now, and I can remember in one of my first years here um, with my colleagues in the curriculum office, we were sitting around a little bit depressed as we were trying to figure out what else to cut um, and what we could not buy. You know, we had the list of things that we really wanted and then the things that we needed and then the things that we could afford, you know, uh, and so we were just felt like we were always cut, 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 cutting. And, you know, just as sort of a thought exercise, we said, if we could add, we all kind of laughed because we knew we couldn't do that. But if we could add, what would we really want to add? And we just started getting a bunch of ideas on the, on the board, on the whiteboard in that room right next door. And, you know, and then we ranked them. And the number one thing was an engineering class. We thought, this is middling, man. Look at our kids. If you walk around, talk to students. I mean, you hear a lot about engineering, want to do engineering. We thought it would be great to offer an engineering class. We know we have the capacity in the community to support that. Um, and then we just sort of said, well, we can't do that. So we set it aside and got back to the work of the day. So a couple years ago, uh, when we started talking about adding some new classes, you know, engineering came right back to the top of the list again. Um, so that's one of the things you'll hear about today. And we're offering a number of new classes. We have seven new classes that we're offering. Um, so we'll go through a lot of those. Uh, but we're going to start off with engineering. And so here today, uh, we have Steve Last. He is uh, a teacher uh, at Midland High and Dow High. And Steve uh, has been with us for quite some time teaching a variety of classes, especially focused in CAD, computer-aided design. And then this year, we're offering a brand new class, Introduction to Engineering Design, which is part of a three-year engineering sequence. We'll get to more of that later. But to start off, uh, Steve is going to take you through one of the activities that he has students do in Introduction to Engineering Design. Because part of what we want to talk about is not just the content, but the way that we're teaching and how that fits in uh, with everything as we move forward, all right? So we're going to put you to work a little bit, if that's OK. All right, Steve. OK. Are you mic'd up? Are you ready to go? Is it live? Right. you got to press and hold it for three seconds until you get the green light. One, two, three. Am I on? Is it on? Yes, it is. Okay, I can't tell. Cool. Well, thanks for being here. Oh, is it? Oh, I thought it was. Is it a green light? Sometimes you got to get that mic real close, too. Yeah. OK, is it on now? Is green that lights on? on. And volume? Is it good? I think so. Go ahead and talk. You can hear? I'll, I'll talk loud too. You. Okay, okay. You're very good. good. <laughs> so, uh, thanks for having me here today and inviting me. I'm going to talk to you about the uh, new class called Introduction to Engineering Design. We call it IED. Um, it's part of Project Lead the Way. Um, I've been teaching CAD at Midland Public Schools for a long time, and there's a pretty big difference this year. It's kind of like a reboot of the old CAD class. CAD, by now, the first week we would have been doing AutoCAD. We would have been heavy into CAD. It's very, it was very CAD heavy. So it's different now. Um, we haven't even started CAD yet this year. Um, we're doing a lot of sketching right now. Um, there's a lot of activities. Students get up out of their chair a lot, and um, we have a lot of what they're called instant challenges. So the second day we had an instant challenge, and kids worked together. They didn't even know each other. It's 9 through 12, and um, 
it was very exciting to see uh, what they came up with. They have to collaborate and do with little supplies. I wish I could show you pictures of them right now, but um, uh, it's very cool. I can tell you, it's like I said, it's been a very positive experience for me, and I think the kids are really gonna benefit from this new class. It's a very positive thing. So this week, um, we started off with, we've been doing sketching, we've done isometric sketching, we've done perspective sketching, and so now we're getting into multi-view sketching. And this is laying the foundation for CAD. We're gonna still use CAD Inventor in about a month, maybe a little bit closer than that. And so one of the activities that we have them do is called the glass box. Now how many of you have ever taken an engineering class before or a drafting class? Okay, a few people. So do you remember learning about the glass box? And uh, well, it's a, it's a great way to teach visu visualization. So what I've done is given each of you a handout and um, Scott's got the PowerPoint up here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put together a glass box. So you've got scissors, um, you've got an overhead transparency. And so you guys are gonna make a glass box to help us learn what visualization is all about. So go ahead and go ahead Scott and go to the next slide. And basically, we're gonna cut this out, and then you're gonna fold it up. And I've got tape, it's kind of in front, you'll have to grab that. And what you're gonna do with the little markers there, you're gonna draw an object that I have you put inside that box. Okay, so go ahead and hit the next slide here. Um, so first thing you're gonna do is cut out the edges here. So go ahead and do that. It's going to make a lot of scrap. Sorry, you guys. <laughs> and so this is what we did Monday in class. We started off with this. And then after you get things cut out, I'll give you a chance to fold it. But while you guys are doing that, I'll just tell you a little more of what we do um, it, during the first weeks, we learned a lot about the engineering design process. And basically, it's all about brainstorming up in the front, and then generating ideas and concepts, and then going down and selecting a concept that you think is going to be the best thing, and then building and testing it, and then evaluating it. And so it's an iterative model, meaning we go back to various steps all the time, and um, so the students are getting more of a wide range feel for what it would like to be an engineer, in my opinion. Um, so it was neat putting them all together in groups at the very beginning just to see what ideas they came up with. Like I said, they don't know each other very well. And I was amazed at what some of the ideas they came up with for a cable car was the one project we did, okay. and I strung, strung a fishing line across the room. I gave them a toilet paper roll, a balloon, some straws, and they figured out how to make that cable car travel down the fish line. So they had to work together. They had limited supplies. Um, it, was, it was neat to see. Um, another thing we did is they had to build a bridge out of paper. And uh, so all I gave them was a sheet of paper and uh, two wooden blocks to represent the piers. And I gave them, you know, like a minute to think about it a little bit, brainstorm. I had kind of a plan of times and stuff. And uh, I even had them do a little research. And that was the most important part of the, that whole assignment. And so they came up with bridges. I was amazed again. Some of them, I think, were like 48 inches long um, with just a sheet of paper. Okay, so this is hard, right? Folding these and uh, um, the tape. Let's see. You have tape there. All right. Yeah, I, the cleanup is, we do have a class norm where clean up your mess. So students clean up at the end. Um, Okay, so once uh, you get your glass box built, the next thing I want you to do, you either have one or two items there, and I'm pretty sure they'll fit in the box. And 
next year I'm going to have my wood shop guys help me out and make some uh, inch and a half cubes. They'll all be kind of standard and so forth, but these Walmart blocks work really well right now. <laughs> um, so build yourself some sort of object like this would be fine. And like I said, use tape to tape it together a little bit. And then whatever you want to be the bottom. Now one thing we do have to teach them is what is the front view of an object. And it's always the most shapely or most descriptive shape is always the front view. So once you determine what the front view is of your object, put tape on what you would consider the bottom and then tape it on to the plane on the glass box that says bottom. Does that make sense? So Scott, if you could maybe oh, advance yep. the slide, they'll see a little bit more. <clears throat> So here we are, we're taping the edges. All I have to do is flash this up there and they get it pretty well. Tape on the bottom here. And then uh, here's my front view. We decided to make this the front view on this example. And then go ahead and switch to the next one. Okay, so now you have some what I call old overhead marker. Um, in the old days we used to use these on overheads and you can wash them off if you make a mistake. So what I want you to do is carefully tilt your glass box with the object in it and I want you to draw each of the views that you would see if you're looking at it orthographically. Orthographically means straight on. Um, I always think of an orthodontist straightens teeth so ortho I'm pretty sure it's a Greek word or something so it means straight so when you say orthographic you're talking about looking at it straight on and then draw what you see and fake it until you make it if your box isn't perfect there <laughs> Okay, you can use any color you'd like with the marker there. So again, I look at this as setting up the foundation for engineering technical graphics. Students have to understand how the views are oriented with respect to each other. And then for those of you who know what a hidden line is, feel free to make a hidden line if you have a hidden feature on your object. Overachiever panel for the angle like that. So in this example up here, in the, the, rear, the left view, you can see a couple of hidden lines. They represent this line and this line that we wouldn't see if we were looking at it from back there. Now I know why I'm in sales. <laughs> <laughs> we all have a role to play in life. <laughs> you know, a nice thing about this class too is when you, if you have a student who's in the class, if you ask them, well, what'd you do in class today? You, if, if your kids are anything like mine, you get the stuff, fine, mm -hmm. okay. But when they describe what happens in this class, it comes out as paragraphs, not bullet points. You know, there's a lot more to say. Uh, and they have to describe what they're doing because they're not just sitting and getting. Okay. That looks pretty good. You got them all? You got the bottom view too? <laughs> okay. So after they get finished and they've got it all drawn, I have them take a picture of it with their cell phone and then they're going to load that up to me a little bit later in the week. And then I have them take it apart, take the object out and then unfold the box and go ahead Scott and show the. So this is the standard uh, orientation of the six principal views we call this. And these are the three standard views that we mostly use the front, the top and the right side but they're always in this order. And so 
A lot of people don't understand that. We did isometric sketching beforehand. Those are easy to understand, but an engineer has to be able to understand these type of drawings here. So that's the main purpose in, in doing this assignment. So, so I can see here, uh, can I hold yours up? Um, so here would be the proper orientation for the standard views, okay? And it's beautiful. <laughs> success. Okay, success. That's basically what we do. So, Great. Thank turn you. It over. Good job. Okay. Thank you. Good job, before we let you guys. Steve, uh, before I let Steve head back to school, does anybody have any questions? Either, what questions do you have about this activity or about the class in general? So there is no more CAD classes. So CAD one, CAD two are gone. CAD 1 is gone this year. CAD 2 still exists this year. And um, there's a good, healthy, ro uh, robust enrollment of CAD 2. And then next year, do you want to explain it? Yeah, or? we'll get into all that in just okay. a little bit. So we'll, when I go through the course sequencing, I'll answer that question. Well, my son's so, already done CAD 2. I know, Nathan, yeah. Um, I was going to show you, they are doing notebooks, and they're all sketches and um, perspectives. And I'm... For me, it's really gratifying because a lot of this stuff got lost when we brought CAD back. And so for me, it's kind of like going back to some important foundational skills that students are getting. So I can go on and talk for a long time. Is it new that they're 9th through 12th grade all together? No. No, they have. Right, yeah. Ideally, we would like this to be a ninth grade class. Um, I don't know. Go ahead. Because there's another sequence of classes that we can add to it. And uh, ninth or a tenth grade, and then they have principles of engineering for next year. And then there's another one for architecture and civil engineering. And then the capstone course. So there's potentially four or three. I'm not sure how we're going to Yeah, proceed, we'll talk about all that in a little bit, too. So. Anything any other else questions? for Steve before he goes? All right. All right. I think we got to Thank you. Help Sorry about the mess. Cluck the materials. <laughs> no, it's good. Knowledge is messy. It's OK. You get to keep those glass boxes. <laughs> Scott, I will have you collect my markers and scissors yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah, if you're going to head back yeah. right now, we can collect that yeah. stuff. I can even have Brooke bring it in tomorrow. Would that be all right? Yeah. Here. Here's a bag for him. <laughs> See ya. Yes, I was thinking that when he was talking. All right, you guys are good sports playing along. Way to go. Now, when you go home and you're talking with your students, your, your children at dinner, now you can tell them what you did at school today. Don't just say nothing. You know, you say, give them a description. Thank you, Lena. So, uh, as I go through the presentation here, which won't be as interesting as what Steve just did with you, but as I go through the presentation, I want you to notice not only the, the content of the courses, but the style of the courses, because this is chosen very and developed very intentionally. So the kind of learning that you just did, as opposed to sit and get, as opposed to me as a teacher telling you something, you writing it down, and then me testing you, you write it back, and I evaluate whether you wrote down what I told you. You know, it, it's, it's much more interactive, much more engaging, and, and students discovering, learning by doing, right? And then, remember, this is an introductory activity. This is to get your brain stimulated. Next, as Steve gets into developing CAD skills, the students will be able to draw on their knowledge of, okay, this isn't just on the computer. This is, this is a real 3D object, and they've had the experience of handling and manipulating. So, you know, fast forward, where do you end up? You're designing a building, you're designing a car, 
you know, you have to be able to imagine that 3D structure in a 2D uh, environment. Well, they can do that better because they've had this type of experience. That type of pedagogy, we call the style of learning, you know, pedagogy uh, goes through all the classes that we'll be talking about today. So, <coughs> excuse me. And sometimes this works better than others. It was working before. Do you want to just take me through? Thank you, Allison. So if you want to just bring up the next four things, the next four points, just, and hold it there for now. So uh, I just want to go back to review real quickly. We won't take a lot of time on this. But we've developed our STEM strategic plan uh, led by Brian Brutin. Uh, one of our associate superintendents for the last several years. Our plan stretched out from 2015 to 2019, was focused on all grade levels, kindergarten through 12th grade, and focused both on teaching strategies and courses. And at the elementary level, modules or experiences as opposed to courses, but experiences that we could have students uh, go through. And it's not just about the content, but it's about the style and the way of teaching. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at. So you've seen this before probably, but uh, MPS was incredibly blessed to receive a, a $3 million grant from a number of our community foundations, the Grace a Herbert and Grace A.C. Dow, the Gerstackers, Strosackers, the Dow Chemical Company Foundation. We're incredibly grateful for that. We're also very grateful to live in Midland and have the community that we have that uh, approved our bond, uh, 2.95 mil bond uh, in, in February 2015 which raised uh, up to $121 million for us to spend over the next 12 to 15 years. And despite the fact that we all encourage Mike to spend this as quickly as possible, because we have lots of ideas, uh, he helps us uh, do it in a, in a responsible manner over that time frame. So a lot of what we're going to be talking about is supported by these two funding sources. So I just want to, I think it's important to point that out. The timeline for the STEM strategic plan, we're actually getting towards the end of it. Uh, the star marks kind of where we are. We started in, in 2015, um, and then of course that we also, the construction of Central Park Elementary was an important part of this uh, strategic plan. Uh, and then along with the construction of the new elementary building, new elementary course modules that have been offered and are now in every elementary, not just Central Park, but in every building. And then our new courses at the middle schools and high schools, which we've been developing for the last year and a half. Uh, they are now all being taught at our four secondary buildings, two middle schools and two high schools. And that's where we are now. And then at the, towards this springtime, we'll kind of evaluate how the year went, figure out how we can better support our teachers uh, moving into next year to teach the classes, and we're going to add another class next year as well. So we talk uh, about wanting to send a, a consistent message. You can hold it right there, please. Thank you. Uh, sending a consistent message on what we're talking about here. So first of all, STEM. You hear a lot about STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, right? So we know that career opportunities in these fields uh, is growing by leaps and bounds and much faster than the available talent or people to fill those uh, careers. We also know that these are pretty engaging areas that many of our students are interested in, which makes it something really important for us to pay attention to. We take, we're taking a look at what we call an inquiry approach. Uh, discovery plus engagement equals learning. It's not just as simple as opening a book, memorizing something, and spitting it back, right? We want to, students to be able to remember something beyond just the activity in the classroom. We're taking a look at that approach kindergarten through 12th grade. So there's a, there's a consistent, even though the, the language be different, obviously the intensity of the activity will be different. You know, the content will get progressively more difficult, but the style of learning is relatively similar in these activities from kindergarten through 12th grade. So that when your four or five year old goes to kindergarten and, and all the way through to when they graduate, uh, they're having a, a, a progressive growth that makes sense to them as a learner. Right? So we're connecting the learning from elementary, middle, and high school. We're introducing ideas in the elementary. Uh, we're exploring them further in the middle school. We want to get away from, well, we don't want students to decide what they're going to do for the rest of their life in the seventh grade. Now, some will. You know, some just seem to know, right? 
Uh, others have no idea, most have no idea. We really would love to see students exploring in the middle school, getting lots of different ideas, trying things out. Maybe you try something out for a semester and you figure out, you know what, I hate that. Hey, that's good. It's good that you figured it out when seventh grade as opposed to waiting until you went to college to figure it out, right? So, uh, so we want students to explore in the middle school and then give them opportunities to specialize in the high school. Uh, not that they can't explore in the high school, they can, but um, they're going to have to take, we want to make sure they have opportunities to really dive deep into something at the high school level. So the opportunities and the content in, in three different areas, uh, biomedical, engineering, and computer science, are now available for our students in elementary school, and middle school, and high school. So I want to repeat that because this is a really important point. So biomedical, engineering, and computer science activities are available for students. Everybody does it in the elementary level. They all go through it. Uh, there are optional courses in the middle school in all three of those areas, and, and elective courses at the high school in all three of those areas. So a student gets excited about one of those topics or several of those topics, there's opportunities for them every step of the way. That's really important to us. We don't want to have things that are just sort of one-off. We want to, if a student gets excited about something, we want them to be able to explore it further. And the other thing is the approach. So we have, you know that we have the PYP, the International Baccalaureate Primary Years Program at the elementary level, which has really uh, changed our style of teaching into being much more inter, or they'll call it cross-disciplinary, but it, inter, it connecting the content so everything isn't separated from each other. And uh, having students think more richly about what they're doing as opposed to just uh, repeating. So they have to actually think about it, process it to a deeper level. That's going out the elementary level. You know at the high school, we have the diploma program for 11th and 12th grade classes. We have the AP, Accelerated Placement Program, available to students at the high school. Or they can earn college credit in both of those types of classes, both of those types of classes allow students to delve deep into content and think about it more richly. We felt for some time like maybe there's a little bit of a gap in the middle school and we've explored a lot of different solutions to that and we found things that were imperfect. You know, we found things that were really helpful in one way and not so helpful in another um, and we're trying to figure out how do we make sure that students who are prepared through the elementary school to have a more creative a uh, multidisciplinary approach to their learning to be active, engaged learners. We don't want them to slam them in middle school with, okay, now, you know, pardon me for saying this, but sit down, shut up, and, you know, just repeat what I tell you, because that's not going to work. Uh, and then send them to high school, and all of a sudden you're back to a more exploratory model. So we want to make sure we have something that makes sense. Um, and so these courses that we've developed and the style of learning that we developed help create that bridge from elementary through middle on into high school while also giving students the opportunity to really delve deep into something. And a really important point, I think, I really, if you take nothing else away from today, I really want you to know that these classes are for all students. Uh, and I know sometimes when we think about certain types of classes, we, go, we, we have a picture in mind about who is going to take that class. You know, we want these classes to be available for, uh, for students that are our academic high flyers, for students that are in the middle, for students that really struggle. We want them to be for, for boys and for girls. Uh, we want them to be for, uh, for everybody. So uh, it's been important to us to present them in such a way. I know we think about, for example, our AP and our IB classes tend to attract students that think of themselves as very academically successful and not attract students who don't view themselves that way. We want to try to overcome that sort of block. So uh, we developed a number of new classes. The course pathways that we're taking a look at, if you look at the three pictures in the bottom here, computer science, engineering, and biomedical science. So those are the three pathways that were, uh, we developed classes in kindergarten activities, kindergarten through the 12th grade uh, for our students. So I, I just want to go over this real quickly. This is, uh, there's a lot of information here. You don't need to get it all. I just want to kind of give you an idea of the scope of what we're talking about. So this is what's happening at every elementary in our district now. So all the elementary schools, students in kindergarten through fifth grade will have, these are different modules um, that have been developed to give them access to, uh, access to the content in an engaging way. So for example, in kindergarten, looking at structure and function, exploring the design of things, pushes and pulls, the different forces you know, that are involved in, in the world. Uh, taking a look at the human body and then taking a look at animals and math involved in animals. Uh, in first grade, light and sound, the sun, moon, and the stars. That sounds pretty exciting, right? 
Uh, and then some things on animals and animating storytelling. You can just go ahead to the next one. This just gives you an idea of the, these, these are the new modules that all students are being exposed to. Look in the third grade, we have programming patterns. We start to talk about computer science. Already students are getting exposed to that, obviously at an introductory level, at a basic level, but already this is part of the idea of, this isn't just for the academic high flyers. You're all gonna go through this experience and you're gonna see that, oh, I can do this, right? I can, I can do this as a third grader, as an eight year old, I can do this, which means that same student when, when he or she gets to middle school or high school, we want them thinking the same way. Oh, I can do this. You know, this isn't just for fill in the blank. This is for everybody. Uh, you, biomedical science, the human brain, you know, computer programming, computer systems. Uh, look at the robotics opportunities as you get into the fifth grade. And this is all happening in the school day. So you know there's a number of robotics teams and clubs that are available for students in every building in our district, which is awesome. Uh, but this is happening for every student during the school day. So uh, these are really exciting things. Now, so that's what's taking place at the elementary level. And now we're going to focus on at the secondary level. So the new courses that we're offering, and there are seven. And the, uh, the gold is middle school, the blue is high school. Uh, this is on both sides of town, so uh, for Jefferson and Northeast, and for Midland High and Dow High. So at the uh, middle school, it starts with sixth grade. Uh, for those of you that have middle schoolers, you know the sixth grade schedule is kind of a unique animal all to itself. So there's a course called CSI, Medicine in Space. The course names, by the way, come from students. We let students know about the content, ask them to suggest class names, so they're the ones that came up with these. So CSI, Medicine in Space is uh, taking a look at all three areas, biomedical, engineering, and programming. So uh, medical detectives, flight and space, and then we have some computer science activities that we developed. Um, the topics over there, the, the medical detective name and the flight and space name are the modules that we have kind of pre-programmed modules that we've uh, accessed for these classes. So that's a sixth grade opportunity, and, it, and you see that it's all three areas, so students can have a chance to kind of sample and experience and say, oh, I really like this. I'd like to spend more time here. Once they decide that, they get to the seventh and eighth grade. There's three more options. These are semester long courses. Conceivably, a student could take each of these through the course of their middle school experience. In fact, if they were involved in language each year, they, uh, a world language, they still could take each of these classes before they left middle school. If they were involved in band, orchestra, or choir, they still could take each of these three classes. Uh, many students may just want to take one or two but they have room in their schedule to take all three. So green design is, uh, well, more along the lines of what you were just doing today, right? So it's kind of the introductory engineering class. Robo builders is uh, robotics, an introduction to engineering. And then code wizards uh, would be your computer science uh, focus. And these are meant to be very accessible classes. I and mean, you had a certain level of success today with zero preparation, right? Um, to, to create your, your, your uh, design and modeling boxes. So, you know, you, ideally you'd walk away from this experience thinking, oh, okay. I mean, I don't know everything about this yet, but I can do this, right? So Code Wizards is built that way for computer programming. So these are classes, that this, those three classes are semester long courses in the seventh and eighth grade. And then at the high school level, uh, we have three new courses, Computer Science Essentials, uh, Human Body Systems, and Introduction to Engineering, which is the was from the activity you just did today. So computer science essentials uh, is actually, we have a two year computer programming sequence that's already in place at the high school. It's very successful. Uh, students walk out of those classes extremely well prepared for college computer programming classes. They win nationwide competitions coming out of those classes. We know they work. We also know that some students don't feel comfortable taking them. They feel like this isn't for me. I'm not smart enough. I'm not good enough to do this. We want to break through that barrier. So this computer science essentials class slides in as a, as a way for students to access that content. Um, so it's intentionally, at, for those of you that have high school students and know about point levels, you know, it's at a little bit lower point level, uh, which is the message that we send to students when we say, hey, you know, you can do this. Um, and it's meant for students to access the computer science uh, content without any background or preparation. So uh, ideally, and we're just offering this for the first time, but ideally at the end of the year, we'll have students that never thought they could take our computer programming sequence that would now be excited about doing that. Um, so that's the uh, computer science essentials class 
Uh, human body systems is actually replacing a class that we already had in the schedule. We had anatomy and physiology. Um, so this class, human body systems, is, is replacing that class. A lot of similar content, but more applied, more hands-on. Uh, still preparing students to go through our healthcare tech sequence, uh, but it's just a more engaging way of doing it. Um, also a way we can help make sure that the content is similar uh, no matter which class or teacher that you happen to have for that. So human body systems uh, is part of that biomedical science sequence. And then the introduction to engineering, or as we call it, IED, uh, introduction to engineering design is the full name. Uh, and that is an introduction to CAD and, and engineering. So it still is a very CAD heavy class. In fact, CAD 1 and IED have a lot of similarities, a lot of places that they intersect. Um, but it's focused more on helping students conceptualize, not just do the work on the computer, but be able to conceptualize it. When I talked with Steve uh, after the first week of school, he was really excited about the change he saw. Actually, it was after the second week of school. He said he was really excited about the change he saw in his class. He said, if you go back a year ago, and he really enjoyed teaching the CAD classes as well, but he said typically he'd introduce a topic on Monday, so he'd be doing a lot of the talking. On Tuesday and Wednesday, the students would be interacting with the computer more and maybe checking with a neighbor a little bit to see how it's going. But he said by Friday, everyone was pretty much doing his or her own thing. It was really quiet, active, but everyone's just engaged with their computer and not really doing much of else. He said now, based on the structure of the class, it's much more interactive. Students are talking with each other, they're sharing ideas, they're challenging each other, and that's the case throughout the week. And he said it's just a really exciting change. It's a much more active, engaged class. So then I flashed back to a couple years ago. I went to an event in Ann Arbor where they had a, um, I'm forgetting the name of the event now, but it's an open house in the springtime they do for uh, technology-based companies. So they have about 80 to 100 companies that open their doors, and you can go in and see how they're engaging with technology. So they had app creator companies, you had banks that had computer programmers, you had uh, people that were designing drones, I mean, all kinds of cool stuff. And it's just sort of an open house, you wander through and see what they're doing. When my son and I went through the computer programming places, because he's interested in programming, so he wanted to see these places in action, what we noticed is that there was one computer station with two chairs. And at every place we went, the, the supervisors were telling us the way that their professionals worked during the week is there would be two people working on one computer, because they wanted them interacting with each other. They didn't want somebody sitting in the corner staring at a screen. They want them to challenge each other. They want them to share ideas. Um, and that's the way the work world is oriented in that field. So the introduction to engineering design is designed the same way. Um, now the IED is part of a three-year sequence in, in engineering. So the introduction to engineering design is replacing CAD 1. And then starting next year, we'll have another new class, Principles of Engineering which will replace CAD 2. Uh, it'll be a, the content will be more different in that course from CAD 2 than the, the difference was this year. So this is the last year for CAD 2, then we'll phase that out. Next year will be Principles of Engineering. And then the following year, if there is interest, there's a third year uh, capstone experience that we could offer as well, which would be essentially is a full year where students are designing and building their own project. Uh, obviously with assistance and, uh, and, and preparation from the teacher. I've seen it in action. It's an awesome class. Um, I, ideally, we'll offer that in two years. Now, you heard Steve mention several other classes, and uh, Steve's excited about it, and I am too, but there's, there are a number of other classes that we could conceivably offer in this area, but we'll see how it goes. You know? um, we also want to keep in mind we want enough students signing up for all the classes that we can guarantee that we'll offer them every year. So what questions do you have about the seven new classes, because this is really the core part of the presentation today, is for you to know about these classes. So what questions do you have? So like the um, comp science essentials, that's like a point two? So the computer science essentials, point level is a point two, uh, which is, is the message we send to students, this is, this is a standard level class. So, our, uh, so, so Kim is asking about the point levels for the various classes. Uh, human body systems is a point three class, which is similar to where we've had anatomy and physiology the last couple of years. And introduction to engineering is also a point three class, uh, which is similar to where we've had CAD for the last couple of years. So, yeah? Are there additional classes 
for the computer science essentials, similar to the engineering, where they build on those each year? There are. So, Marcy, and I'm repeating the questions because we're recording, so that way. Uh, so, Marcy is asking about the sequence of classes for um, computer science essentials. And remember, that's going coming in underneath the two year sequence that we already have. So, there's computer programming, uh, computer science one and two, and then AP computer science. Those classes are already available. So students can certainly continue on to those. We want to emphasize, too, though, those students can still take those computer science one and two, which is a year-long sequence, without taking computer science essentials as well. So there's a couple different ways you can get into that class. But that could be up to a three-year sequence as well. And those classes are already in place. They're very popular. Uh, our, like I said, our, we know our students do really well coming out. I've talked to a number of graduates from those programs that go to, to top schools. They go to Michigan Tech. They go to schools on both coasts. Uh, they go to any number of other schools in Michigan, Michigan State, and they walk in very well prepared um, after taking our two-year sequence for computer programming. Uh, and now we have another class coming in underneath that. So, yeah. What other questions do you have? So how many students in the high school classes? Uh, typically our class size, I would tell Mike they're all at 35. I'll tell you they're like... <laughs> Uh, I would tell you that probably between 25 and 30 is where they usually end up. And uh, it varies at both schools. Ideally, we'd like to see, you know, one or two sections of computer science essentials at both high schools. Uh, we have one, at, uh, at, well, we'd like to see at least that at both high schools in the future. Human body systems, we typically offer one or two sections at each high school. Um, introduction to engineering is one of those classes that has jumped around a lot to be honest, uh, between one to four sections. Um, their elective classes, is, everyone's not required to take it. So sometimes, uh, sometimes to be honest, it's, it's, you have a really uh, engaging student who goes and tells a million people, and then they all take it the next year. You know? that, we do see that happen. Uh, but uh, in, in general, the, the more excited students are about the class, the more we have sign up for it the next year. Um, so there's a lot of different factors that play into that. Um, so we don't really know how many sections we'll end up offering over time. It's driven by student demand. Uh, but we want to create a sequence. We want all three of these sequences to be strong enough that we're able to offer all the classes every year. That's the ultimate objective. But you know, we're not going to tell students, oh, we're offering four of this and two of that, so you have to sign up for this one. No, we will, we'll see what they sign up for, and then we'll build the sections from there. What other questions? a lot of interest at the middle school level? We are, are we seeing a lot of interest at the middle school level? Absolutely. Uh, the, when we got our sign up back, our, our student requests back last spring, it was overwhelming. I mean, students were really excited about these options. So uh, in fact, we had to kind of go back and rethink the way we had structured our staffs moving forward. You know, it's funny because I have a fourth grader at home and said, so what do you do at work, Dad? He asked me sometimes. And, you know, I, I, I help teachers. I help teachers get what they need so they can teach. But in the springtime, all I'm focused on is schedules. And usually it's the schedule for the next year, right? And we had a whole draft for the schedule for this upcoming school year. We just basically had to throw out and start over because the demand for those classes was so high. So it was a bit of a headache, but it was a great headache to have. Um, and we ended up adding a, a bunch more sections. And I got to say, you know, Mike in the front row, everybody was really supportive, the principals, the counselors, everybody was really supportive of helping make sure we can get what we needed to make that happen. So. Well, I think the names of the classes really drove. <laughs> right. I mean, when Eric came home, he was just like, Robo fun. builders, mom. You know? and, and <laughs> right. So it was a really great way to, to get kids excited about it. It wasn't just introduction to, you know, right. whatever. Yeah. Your marketing. You know, yeah. Yeah. Kim, I think you're right. I think that the names of the courses really helped out and the, and the fact that... So I'm thinking, you know, that comp science essentials, mm -hmm. you're going to scare off that kids. So you need, <laughs> seriously, you need, might need to think of renaming that to something because you're trying to get those point two kids right. that um, need... They, they, I, I'm just thinking that would, that would scare me away. I mean, I'm, I'm just thinking that's not a title I would want to see that class name. Yeah, that's a fair point. I think that's something we'll have to think about and... Uh, take a look at what's happening in, in our in our enrollments. I, I agree that's something we should we should keep in mind. Well they may not look at it because it's not named something that it doesn't sound as exciting and engaging. Yeah. It just yeah, yeah. sounds really right. overwhelming. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's like, a fair point. Doesn't it sounds kind of dry, doesn't it? Essentials. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Have one audience because I think my son has experienced this in some of his you know, some kids have learned it on their own and they're they're coming into it and ready right. to go and they like it. 
but I think there needs to be an offering for people who don't yet know, who like people right. who we, like me would come in right. and be like, I know nothing, right. but right. if the kid next to me is you know, well, that's like above me or something. Yeah. And that is the idea of the class, so, right? Yeah, so I think so, that does well, Scott, the, the, the other thing I'd add to that is um, through the years, most of us won't be here, but the idea is we're starting a kindergarten. So hopefully, we, hopefully the exposure pass, we're talking about and I don't know anything isn't there. And so it builds mm -hmm. that I can do some of that and, and ability to take it at risk. But, of course, we're years from that happening. So Yeah, yeah but we, that's, that, that sort of response is what we want to build. So. I was kind of wondering about the middle school. So my son has Robo Builders, and then he'll okay. have Code Wizards in seventh grade. So in eighth grade, he could do green design, but will there be a fourth <laughs> offering, maybe? So the question is about the middle school opportunities. Mm -hmm. There are, in the seventh and eighth grade, there's three semester-long courses. We're not, we're not anticipating changing that at this point in time. So I would expect that we'll, main we'll maintain those three options. For seventh and eighth graders, again, any seventh or eighth grader could take all three if they scheduled it that way. Um, but we'll see. You know, we do we'll, we we do change what we're doing based on what students want. So right now, though, the plan is to offer those three classes. And he's loving it. He talks about robo builders. Yeah. Every day, get awesome. Our, I was school. What was good about it? Robo builders. Blah 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 blah. <laughs> yeah. So right, I get awesome. I get the same thing at home about the introduction to engineering design class Thank for my you. students. So yeah. You mentioned in the slide the PYP courses um, and how they're part of their goal is to help understanding and mm -hmm. kids being able to communicate back what they've learned. How long has that been in place and are you seeing the results of it? Yeah, that's a great question. So PYP has been in place at every building in the district for three years now, is that right? I'm going to say we were credited for three years. Okay, but I think we, we were started probably, before that. We started in year five, five years, so this is my sixth two years year. Forward. And so yeah. the first year we re finalized the grant and began to implement. Right. So two years implementation, three years of full implement right. implementation. So five years has been going in some, to some level and three years at every building in the district completely. And I think we are starting to see the impact of that on the way our students are thinking. You know, of course, if you think about five years, that means we just have our, our our sixth graders who experienced it five years ago, who, you know, who would have had it from first grade on. This year would be the first time we've had people who could have, students that could have had it for all their elementary experience. So uh, it'll only grow from this point forward. But we are starting to see students that are more engaged, asking more questions, expecting to, to take more ownership of their learning, which is really what we want. Fifth grade expedition. I can't remember if you were done one yet. Wait till you go to that because you really, when you go in and you start talking to them, you realize we're, we are changing the way they think, right. um, the feedback they give. And, and we're hearing a little bit of that from the middle schools. They're just mm -hmm. getting some of it now, but we're hearing the teachers say there's a difference. Right. It's just starting to filter through. Right. At this point, it would be the upper elementary teachers that see it the most. Uh, in the next few years, obviously, as those students filter into the middle school, we'll see it more and more. So, yeah, I think we are starting to bear those fruit, though. I will say that um, we are recent um, into the school district. Yeah. Yeah. She is um, doing well for the transition, but it's completely different of how she's interacting in the class, the way she does her homework, how she, so um, it's been a great experience for her, and it is night and day compared to where she came from. Absolutely. You know, I've, in the work that I just used myself as an example, and I think I'm representative of a lot of people, there is virtually zero time at work where you know, I work for Penny now, before that I work for Brian and I work for Bob and we all work for Mike. No one ever comes to me and says, Scott, this is what you need to do. Here's all the steps you're going to take. Here it's all thought out and you need to do this. They don't do that to me, you know. It's like they say, we have this idea. We want it to start next week. And they go, oh, okay, or next year or whatever it is. Stop talking about it. <laughs> so I, I, I read Mike's emails really quickly. I want to know, <laughs> sometimes you learn stuff in his emails. It's like, oh, that's what I'm going to be doing next year. So, okay. So, but, but, and my job, I think, is like a lot of people's, right? I mean, no one tells me everything I need to know, and then I just sort of repeat it without thinking about it. I have to fill in the gaps. I have to, and, and there's also very little I do by myself. You know, I, you know, I, I have to interact I get to interact with my colleagues here in the office. I get to work with principals and teachers, with parents, with students, and, and 
have everybody come together. It's not just me sitting at a desk memorizing something. That's not the real world. So these classes, yeah, thank you. So these classes help prepare students for that reality. These are awesome questions. I'm going to stick around afterwards if you have more questions. But I know it's important that we stay on time. We're just about done. There were a couple things I wanted to point out before you go. Uh, we mentioned the course pathways, biomedical science, engineering, and uh, computer programming. So this is a different way to look at the classes organized by sequence. Uh, so biomedical science, you can see there's, it's one third of the sixth grade class. And then we have green design for the middle schoolers and then human body systems for the high schoolers. And then if we go to the next slide, we're not going to unpack all of this information. You have it in front of you. So if you want to study the detail, you've got it right there. Uh, again, the sixth grade class explores uh, all three pathways, including programming. And then you've got the Code Wizards class for seventh and eighth graders. Uh, there's also some programming and robo builders, of course. And then uh, computer science essentials. And then there's also two more classes of computer programming, right, at the high school level. And then the engineering course pathway, same thing for the sixth grade class. <coughs> Excuse me. You've got the two different options for seventh and eighth grade. And then the IED, the class you kind of experienced this morning, or this afternoon, rather. And then principles of engineering, which we're going to offer next year for the first time. Uh, for students that have gone through IED this year. And then the engineering design and developments, the capstone experience um, that hopefully we'll be offering in year three, two years from now. And then, uh, you know, depending, there are other classes that Steve obviously wants us to add um, that are very cool classes, so we'll just kind of see where we are. But that's this pathway for engineering. All those classes are listed in front of you. Um, along with the key talking points that we were talking about today a little bit. Can you keep going? Um, a ton of people have been involved in making this happen, so I'm not going to go through all the names. But these are the, you know, the driving force uh, behind helping and supporting the teachers to make these classes happen. And then the next slide shows you the teachers. Uh, I know the print is small, it's just because there's more of them. Uh, but these are the people that are making the magic happen. You met Steve today. Uh, he's doing a great job. All these men and women are doing a great job. We're very thankful for the work that they're doing. Um, so I'll stick around for questions. You've got more information in front of you there. Um, and we're excited about these classes. I can tell our students are too. All right. So thank you. I just add, would add in closing, um, you know, the bond has built maker spaces in for almost, I think they're moving into them thank soon, uh, four of the elementaries. Adams will be next year. Uh, to go and then um, we get into the middle schools and high schools and some of that will be done through their media centers which is the next projects as well that will be bid this year and so we're, we're creating space for some of this to occur as well changing the learning spaces and how, the, how we use them because this is a different way of thinking and, and you follow Project Lead the Way on Twitter, if you're a Twitter user, are they on Facebook? I do it on Twitter. I don't know. I don't are. know. I'm sure they but must. If you, be. If you want to find out more about it, it's it's a national organization, highly researched uh, in it. But it's really cool to see some of the um, engagement. I think they're they're building with students with the style of learning as well. So. It's pltw.org, and then uh, on on their front page, they'll have all the links for the social media if you want. And we're going to let you guys go because we know some of you have to go other places, and then we'll stick around for your questions. Thank you. Yep. What's that?